What brought your parents there? I mean, we'd always traveled. Um, you know, I grew up around the world. My father was with uh, USAID in conjunction with Harvard University when we lived in Africa. And so he wrote the, uh, the curriculum for West, well, for West Africa, I guess. Uh, and, you know, once you kind of get it in your blood, <laughs> you get a little antsy. <laughs> And uh, so they, they, they went over just because it was a new experience. We traveled through Lebanon, Greece, and Italy, where I still have rocks around that I know my father should not have picked up. I mean, he, he climbed, and you know he was not a petite man. He was agile, back of the, uh, of the Acropolis, the back way, not, yeah. not oh, the way wow. he went to. He was just wandering. He was very absent-minded, and and he was picking up a rock and going, "Huh, that's nice." And so when we went back to, we were there for the summer, and when we went back to Africa, the customs agent said, "What have you got in your suitcase?" And he said, "Rocks." <laughs> and <then> we, <laughs> you know. And I had been. Uh, working three jobs in the DC area and was pretty exhausted because I, I never slept. She said, why don't you come for a visit? So I said, okay. So I took a leave of absence from my main job. And so I said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take, you know, a six week leave here. Um, and they said, okay, see you in a little bit. Um, I also had sent a, a telegram saying, arriving on Tuesday, flight, da-da-da, out of New York. I didn't say which date. <laughs> so, and, you know, so they, did, they were checking for a couple weeks prior. When, um, and then I, I arrived, and there was nobody at the airport, the agent in the airport. And I didn't speak any Farsi or, you know, have any knowledge of the city. And I didn't have that much cash with me either. Um, you know, I put in a call to um, Iran Zamin, Odette, Odette. Oh, yes, Odette. Yeah, but she took the message, and then they were like, oh, my God, where are you all? Literally, I didn't have time to recover from jet lag because it was a teacher's sort of tour. Anyhow, we were whisked off on this bus the next day to a tour up of the Caspian. Um, I still had jet lag and I was like, okay, <laughs> wherever. The, uh, the very first cello kebab I had, they brought it. It was just a normal cello kebab, you know, kubade. And I thought it was for the whole table. You know, the rice, the, the big thing of rice. Um, I was just eating just, a, you know, that much rice. Well, within um, uh, a very short time, I couldn't tell you what now, but I could scarf one of those down, the whole thing, did it with egg, you know, mixed it all up, I'm, you know, using the spoon, and I assimilated quickly. <laughs> and it's Who still, does that? Does I, you know, I, I can make... Um, Persian food all day long. Um, make a regular meal or something. I don't know how to do that stuff. Roland does all that. <laughs> so. Oh, lucky you. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> and both kids, both kids know how to cook very well, too. But they don't cook Persian. They just let it come to me and, you know, mom, mom, make us some, some gourmet sabzi or, you know. So. How did you learn Persian cooking? Taught my, well, from eating it, for one thing. You know, the first time I tried to make tadik, it was not good. But now I got it. Now I got it. And, um, wow. Well, you know what it's supposed to be like, so. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We, when we lived out of state, we, we got real lucky. <laughs> we lived in Dallas for about four years. And they had, you know, Persian gro grocery stores, Persian, you know, restaurants and, and so yeah. um, 
Yeah. Wow. So tell me the story of meeting Roland. Oh, that's kind of magic. We got there. I got there in October. Somebody was hosting a, a Halloween party. The day before the Halloween party, I had come to the school for the first time. Finally back from this trip, over jet lag, and I'm sitting in the, the faculty room of the old, um, the old school, just so Charleston. All the kids hung out on the steps. Well, there was a long table directly as you entered either either way and then there was a little tiny room off the side big enough for maybe two or three teachers to go in there shut the door and really concentrate if you sat at the long table you were drinking chai and smoking cigarettes and talking mm -hmm. sitting in there and i was talking to fred yeadon and a couple other people and the it sounds corny but it's it, it, it's true i swear um, the door opened and it was a, a beautiful October day and he was silhouetted behind, you know, he was walking in from the steps and I looked at him and he, I know he saw me and um, I, I just, I froze. I just, it was a weird feeling. It was like, ah, <laughs> and the yeah. love. Behind him, it was like, behind him, it was like, there should be a, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so he went uh, off into this little room and I was trying to, I didn't know anybody. I was trying to be cool. And I was like, you know, who, who, who's in there? <laughs> and, you know, he, he came out for tea one time. And again, we kind of, you know, looked, but no words were exchanged. So that was my first meeting with me. Later, he told me he was he saw me and he had a similar feeling, but that he was he was playing cool. You know, he was going to be, yeah, left brain. Yep. Yes. <laughs> right. So, um, it was a, maybe that night. Maybe uh, I didn't have anything. I you know, as a, it was a costume party, but I didn't have anything to wear as a costume, and I didn't know these people. Or, you know. So I had a dress. I still have the dress. Um, it, uh, it was Persian sky blue, you know, and it had big bunches of cherries on it all over. And I thought, well, that looks kind of costume. So I, and it looked nice on me at the time. So I, I wore that and I went to the party and I knew a couple of people and I'm talking and then there's Roland and he, he comes up and he starts to, to talk to me and, and Roland engaged in talking and, and so on. And I was very interested. So we started talking about a book um, and it happened to be Strangers in a Strange Land. I had read that on the airplane. He had read it, I don't know when, you know, another, or at least he told me he'd read it. We were talking about the book. And then he said, um, you know, where do you live? And I said, well, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I know it's, uh, I gave him, you know, kind of directions off of Palavi and it's up by, you know, da, 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 da. And um, he said, oh, I live up there too. Uh, do you want to share a taxi home? I said, sure. So I invited him in for a cup of tea or coffee or something. And he said, yes, I did not real because I was with my parents and I did not realize that my mother had two different kettles, one for boiling things and one for, uh, that was filled with sort of minerals that she used for the iron. That was the one I used. So it was undrinkable, this coffee and this, you know, this that wow. was Halloween and I drank, I, just, I couldn't drink it, he couldn't drink it, but he, we stayed and we talked. And then he asked me out, to, he said, would you like to go for a hike up the mountain? I said, yes, it sounds great. So in a couple of days, we went up to the mountain. It was very short, it was whirlwind. You know, we, we had some more dates. We, you know, I went over to his place and he made me some 
shepherd's pie, you know, or something. And so by Christmas, we were engaged. Wow. And, yeah. And by no rules, we were married. Fantastic. And, yeah. So it was, uh, it was, it was fast. <laughs> and things like yesterday, you know. Yeah. Because we weren't Department of Defense or um, we weren't anything. We were just independent contractors in the eyes of the governments and so on. So we had and still have a, a Persian marriage license um, with the witnesses and with it, you know, special exemption. I didn't need this I didn't, and so on. Um, when we later came back to the state, he came in illegally, basically. We had to have it transferred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was, it was traumatic because, uh, I mean, that's further down the line of the story, but we had to find a, um, uh, somebody to translate. We found, um, oh, what's his name? Humian Khalili's brother. Yeah, the Parviz. Harvey's, right. Harvey's, yeah. He, he was in uh, Boston, because that's where we were, and we got a hold of him, and he translated our marriage license to give to the um, immigration people who weren't too happy <laughs> with their own. Did you have to leave in a hurry? We would... So we got married in seven, we met in 74, we got married in 75, um, and finished out. I obviously quit all my jobs, stayed, and got a contract and so on. Um, and then we took a year and we went to England and we missed Iran. We both missed it, everything. And so we called up Irvine and said, can we come back? And he said, okay. And so we drove back. Uh, we had a Renault 4. And he drove across Europe and Turkey and came back. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, came back to Iran. And things were just starting to kind of start. You know, yeah. I was getting calls from the state saying, what's going on? And of course, we didn't actually know anything. It was when the, the, the first thing that we heard about was um, there was a, a, the cinema in Ahwa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but it was, you know, we were there for a purpose and we couldn't get out because we were independent contractors. The embassies didn't really want to help one way or the other. And um, then they closed the airport, they closed the borders. Um, we had kind of an underground network, you know, I think Charlie and Pixie Pruitt lived down by the airport and they said, ah, it's open, you know, can you get here? And, blah, blah. and I had a ticket um, uh, through Kuwait, Baghdad, and then on to London. So I left with, um, when they opened, Roland said, you're out. I'll try and sort all the business, the, you know, banking, the car and household stuff. Um, so I flew on from from there and landed with two cats and two carpets and um, the banks were burning. So the only thing we could put money into were gold bracelets. We'd gone down to the bazaar and bought, I still have them. <laughs> when I got off the plane, I was, I was still in the, the tunnel uh, in, in Heathrow. And they must have had, you know, a, a list of people and where they'd come from and so on. And they said, this is Molly. And I said, yes, come with us, please. <laughs> and um, they said, you've got two cats. I said, yes. <laughs> and I collapsed. There may have been a little drama too, but I collapsed and said, I've just left everything. I've left my husband and da, da, da. Well, your cats will have to go into quarantine or we destroy them, blah, blah, blah. They're, yeah, so they did. They were very kind. They put them in quarantine 
um, and then I had to make arrangements for them to be shipped on to the States. I stayed with friends in London and tried to get a hold of Roland, who was still back in Tehran. He was still teaching sporadically. And he had, uh, you know, there were international baccalaureate students who were it was imperative that, you know, they had their, their class and, you know, it was a big deal. Um, finally, it became apparent that um, it was untenable. And so the, the British embassy came and, and got him. And they flew him out on a military um, flight out of, took forever, from um, Tehran to Cyprus and then on to um, Heathrow. And, but that, it, he was there another month or so. So basically, you know, we left everything. We had nothing. Fortunately, the things that had meant something to us before, we had wedding gifts that the kids had given us, you know. And we'd left those in London, you know, before we went back. So yeah, we were kind of, ah! Um, yeah, it was a distressing exit. It was, and, it, and we had no, as many didn't, we had no closure, you know? Yes. It's just like, out, done, you know? So we, um, we took what money we had in London, and we, uh, we went to Switzerland for a week where there was, nobody was interested. They didn't want to know anything about it. They, you know, there was a revolution going on and they were like, oh, da -da -da, you know, and, and, and it, it was actually the best thing for us. And we stayed for a week and just went skiing. Um, you know, we- Fantastic. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, now what? So then we made the decision to, to fly on to the States. And that's where they said, Mr. Morley, what are you doing here? You haven't, you're, you're we don't like your kind. Uh, <laughs> he forgot to get a visa. <laughs> he, thought he, he thought he would just, you know, play dumb. Now, I yeah. shouldn't give all the stories away, but... He had been a young college student exchange soccer coach at a uh, wealthy summer camp in New Hampshire. And uh, he, at the end of the summer, he thought he would, you know, take a little trip around the state and do this and do that. So we went to Canada first, because that was close. And they were used to the, the, the British soccer coach people coming from the camps and they said don't do that again you know we'll let it go this time but I, unbeknownst to him they put something in his passport so then later in the summer he was doing a greyhound bus around the country and he walked across the border in texas you know walked over to juarez and uh, from el paso and they don't play <laughs> <laughs> yes. Said, boy, <laughs> you got 24 hours to get to your port of entry, which was New York, um, and get out of Dodge. And so that so he's an adventurer. Oh, he's, yeah. <laughs> you know, he usually gets away with it. <laughs> so he, um, that was still in his passport when we came to the States. And they said, you, you have entered illegally twice now. This is the third time. And um, what do you have to say for yourself? And so on. Then they had to interview me, make sure it wasn't a marriage of convenience or, you know. Right. Asking very personal questions. And I'm trying to not get too emotional. <laughs> But in the end, he, he did get his, uh, he is a citizen. He has been a citizen. Um, and he had top secret security clearances. So I guess he's okay now. He's okay. He's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
They found out he's a good egg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite the story. Yeah. Any, were, were your kids born here? Yeah, they were. Um, our daughter was born in Massachusetts, and she is named Laurel Ariane. Um, Sally, um, Sally and her husband, Edisham Zabe, um, were dear friends. And only, we didn't know Joey so much, but we knew Ariane, and I loved the name. And uh, so she's named Laurel Ariane. Um, <laughs> were, were they born shortly after you settled here? She was born in 81. Is that right? So yeah. you waited a little bit, but not long. Yeah. Not that long. And um, our son was born here, and he's 34. And um, they both know how to swear in Farsi. <laughs> <laughs> the essentials. You know, <laughs> and they know they know Persian food very well. It's funny, I I felt such a, a connection that I felt that, and this is silly, and you don't have to use it, but I'm going to tell you. I felt that, you know, somewhere down the line, there must be some Persian blood in it because it was everything. It was the, the, the people, the, the culture, the, the oh, oh, you know. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, the no. family, the family. Chaish <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, all of this that I said, uh, and 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 the country itself. I mean, the you know we we did a fair bit of traveling around the country. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, I mean, we were up in the north. We were down in the south. We went to Isfahan for our wedding uh, for our honeymoon, um, and we were in Ahwaz and you know all of. So I I had a good taste of it. So I felt as if there must be in my blood somewhere that caused me to so I got on one of these things ancestry you know a sense of the DNA test and and it came back as white bread as you could be I mean yeah what is the mix it's, British no well German uh, and Scottish with a little bit of Irish in in there um, and, and for the exotic, you know, you could reach into a little bit of Scandinavian, but pretty much German, Scottish. Well, even, even the Scottish, you know, we went to one of these Highland games and I said, oh, I'm Scottish, you know, what's my kilt or yeah. whatever. And they said, I lass, you're not. Your people went over to Ireland. <laughs> oh no, that's I dispute this. Yeah. Scott Irish or Scottish? <laughs> know, that's right. That's right. So, but I try. But in my heart, I feel. You, you feel know. Iranish? Yes. <laughs> Irony. <laughs> exactly. That's so funny. I like Highland games. Yeah, so do we. Yeah. So does our, our son. He went off and he said, I will, I'm, I'm going to claim that tartan. So he bought um, actually two kilts at the, at the time. One of them was one of these canvas working ones. Um, and he actually got rolling into one. <laughs> oh, I'd like to see that picture. <laughs> I'll see if I can dig it out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, do you remember of all your travels, whether one really sticks out and was memorable for you of all the places that you went in Iran? Um, there, there are a lot of memorable ones. Yeah. Um, pleasant, memorable. The, the first one would be um, 
Isfahan because that's where we had our honeymoon. It was that's such a beautiful place. It really is. Now, Roland's mother came from um, the UK for the wedding and the first time meeting me. And she, she said, oh, you're going traveling. I'll come with you. Oh, great. <laughs> to make matters worse, my dear husband, who I think we have established, um, just waits for an opportunity to present itself. He doesn't necessarily always plan, mm -hmm. made any reservations for Nowruz. And so all the hotels were, were filled. So he said, okay, wait here. And we went to one and, and they said, okay, they have one room and they're gonna bring in another bed. And I just kind of, you know, oh. fully wed, hours even. And- um, Was she there the whole time? No, no, in the end, he said, okay, we'll hold that one and we'll go one, one or two more places. We did find a hotel with, with two, side by side <laughs> bedroom, you know. But anyhow, so that but we had a we had a lovely time. We 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 went everywhere, we walked, and I just remember it just overwhelmingly beautiful. And the thing that struck me was even the women who wore chadors down there, they were you know, in, in Tehran they were either black chador or or a kind of black with a flower, you know, but yeah. kind of drab. In Isfahan, they look like butterflies everywhere, just in the flocks of butterflies. Yeah. So colorful. And I hadn't seen that, you know, before that. So that was memorable. Another one was Mashed. And uh, I think it was our first anniversary. Um, it was Christmas break. And Roland said, let's go to um, Afghanistan. Oh, okay, <laughs> so we um, we took the train from Tehran to Mashhad, and um, we had to get some shots and so on. But we had the shots; we just forgot the shot record, the little booklet. So at the border in Mashhad, they said, "No problem, go ahead." And they didn't care; we were leaving the country. Um, so we went on to um, Herat, and that's a whole other story. I mean, that was, it was like stepping back in time, you know, leaving Iran, going to northern Afghanistan. And Did going you go by yourselves? Yeah, yeah. It was safe then, you know. Yeah. Um, so we stayed, we went from Herat to Kabul, we went back to Herat, we you know, went to the border and, and Mashad, they said, uh, no, 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 no. Um, you don't have your health records and you, you know, and we said, but we were just here a week ago. And they said, I know, I know, but you, you know, never mind. We have a brand new um, health building and quarantine place. You can stay there. And, you know, we have to quarantine you for 24 hours and test you and so on. And Roland said, well, that works out. We didn't have a hotel anyhow. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so they took us off to the quarantine uh, building facility, which was beautiful, brand new. I think they were still painting some rooms. And they said, you know, we need to test you. And so they came and I don't know what they were testing us for. They handed me a swab and they said, do something you know, here. Wow. I didn't know what end to put it. I didn't know where, up my nose, in my ear, in my mouth, other areas. So I just kind of licked it, put it in the bag, back to them. Back to them. They were, you know, and they said, you're free to, you know, walk around the, the grounds. And they had beautiful gardens because you do. And so we walked around the gardens and, but they were following us. Like we're going to run away or something. We came back, we went, 
you know, they had dinner for us that they brought in, chalo kebab, I think, and so on. And then they said, would it be all right if um, you met some visitors in the morning? We said, sure. You know, didn't quite know what they meant, so, you know. We woke up the next morning, we had breakfast, we met them in the hall that we were supposed to meet. There were television cameras, there was press, there were school children on field trips, all staring at us. We're staring at them. We were the very first people, Barangi, to be quarantined in this facility, and they all, I don't know what, I don't think anybody asked us anything. They just took our pictures and, you know, the, the school children looked at us and, you know, we tried to play with them. Or I don't, so that, that was a fond memory as well. So you were unwitting stars. Yeah, yeah. Because as I said, the facility was brand new and we were the very first ones to have to be quarantined, you know. So it sounds like it was win-win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That is quite the story. You look exactly the same. You look just. You think so? Yes. Your smile, everything. I can still see you, you know, reading books and talking and, you know, exactly the same. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate that. I was a little shyer back then, but you were, you were, but very sweet, very endearing. Thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed that art class, except for macrame. <laughs> I, left and right, uh, you know, all that coordination. <laughs> you had made these great macrame things and. I wanted it to look like that, but it wasn't happening. <laughs> oh, well. So that is so wonderful. And as, as far as, you know, not having closure, I think that's how so many people have felt for 40 some years. Yeah, it was um, very cathartic. Um, I don't even know how I found, I think they found me, I mean, and then we went back to a reunion. We've been to two reunions. There was a reunion. You in, came to DC. Yeah. Well, yeah. we went to that one. That was a, Roland was actually speaking in Congress. Yeah. He, he um, had to... I can't remember. It was something with his work, and we had, you know, we were there for that. And and again, it was just, you know, you guys are all grown up and successful and intelligent, articulate, fun people, but put you all in a room and you revert back to your <laughs> childhood. You just, it, it was a joy to watch. It was a joy to watch. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, and you are our teachers again. Yeah, yeah you know, you know it was, although some, some little stories would come out, that a couple of the girls came up to, to Roland and said, Mr. Morley, which is, you know, weird at this point, um, do, you, do you remember that day? And they would tell him stories of things they had done that he had no idea they did, <laughs> you know. He'd done something. You know, he's not really. Yes, <laughs> yes. A little spacey. Brilliant, but spacey. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. I told Mr. Plexico, I said, did you know like 90% of the girls in homeroom had a big crush on you? And he goes, I wish I knew then. <laughs> he's just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> or he said something like, nobody told me. Yeah, <laughs> the, the girls in Roland's classes started a petition for him not to get married. 
<laughs> oh, that's going in the tape. <laughs> when we were aged, they started a petition. Oh, don't get married, don't get married. And they all signed it and so on. Because I, I think they had a crush on him. You know? Yeah, they had dibs on him. <laughs> they didn't know. I was, I was just a new person who suddenly swooped in and, you know, took the hot teacher <laughs> well i have to tell you you were very beloved too oh. <laughs> you know you had style like you wore really cool clothes and boots and you're artsy yeah <laughs> that's sweet yeah yeah so you were kind of like our star couple you know <laughs> and then we didn't know like when you first arrived we thought well maybe they're dating it was like this secret you know and yeah. then when we found out you guys were engaged we go wow that's so cool yeah <laughs> you know kind of like a fairy tale that it 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 feels like that it, it really yeah. does it really you know it was um you know nothing was grand or over the top it was it just sort of came together and then you know we put it together i mean it was quick <laughs> it was very quick um but it fantastic. was fantastic it was lovely yeah, yeah. how long did your parents stay there they left um oh god they, they didn't left. stay as long as you no they didn't they weren't there for the revolution um, they were back in the States. Um, I think we, we, Roland will be able to tell you the dates exactly. I, you know, it's all I can do to remember. I remember the movie theater was in the summer of 78 because I had visited the U.S. to visit my grandmother yeah. and I heard it on American radio. That's how big it was. It was big. My parents were in the States then, so they yeah. were, they might they may have decided to stay there. Yeah. So they, they were the ones who called us and we were actually hosting new teachers um, who were coming and we had, we had three of them. One was a married couple who left in the middle of the night. They never even made it to school. Um, they, they said, nope, we're out. And the other one was um, um, Daphne Shaw. Oh, I heard she passed away. I heard that too. That's very sad. She was a lovely and yes. woman. Yes. I learned really how to, I mean, really how to write. That's mostly what I do. Yeah. I learned it from her. Yeah. She was delightful. I, you know, she came, so she was staying with us and we, the, the idea was that, you know, a couple of teachers who had been, so we must have just been back uh, for that, for that summer. Maybe we'd been back a year. Um, he'll be able to answer that question. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I had English class and our English teacher left and Mrs. Shaw came back to, yeah. came to resume and the class just became so much more interesting to me yeah. you know and at that time because everything was in flux and everyone was basically there was freedom of expression because things were already falling apart yeah. she had us writing about everything wow. you know were you able to keep any of those notes and things i have one composition that oh. i kept about the political situation she was very encouraging and the most important thing she taught us was that when you write something, it doesn't just pop out wonderfully. You have to keep editing, you know, over and over. It's iterative. Yeah. And I never knew that. So, yeah. so it was invaluable and she was just such a quiet, lovely person. Very, yeah, very humble, very, you know, she's a Rhodes Scholar. Wow. Did she marry an Iranian? I think she must have done uh, because her daughter it has a, a Persian name uh, and her daughter looks 
I must have seen her on the Aranzamini page. Um, I found her. She's running for office. Oh, wow. In Arizona. Where? Uh, I'll find out for you. Or just click on that thing and tell her. Oh, wow. She was We're actually uh, going to be working the polls. <laughs> um, uh -huh. you know. I found that from her just reading her stuff and a little bit of messaging that she was very traumatized by her mother's illness and is running for office to do like healthcare reform. Oh, excellent. You know, people are motivated by these things and, oh, I think she would love to meet you. I would love to, yeah, particularly since, you know, I, I remember this summer, um, I can't even remember the couple who, who, because they stayed with us, you know, we, they didn't know where to stay or how to find an apartment. And so they were, the idea was to live with us until they, they did. And um, this couple, I think they were from the Midwest. They were, they'd never been out of the country before. Uh, oh, that's like, scary. Yeah, I think she taught history and he, I don't know what he taught. Um, the young couple. And they were getting calls from their parents saying, oh, you got to leave. You got to, they packed up in the middle of the night and went to the airport. Yeah. Didn't say anything. But uh, yeah, she, um, she was a neat lady. I liked her a lot. I will do that. I will look for her. Yeah, her name is Shireen Gorbani. Well, Shireen, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll, look that, I'll look that up. So I've yeah. met a few, um, you know, people here in Arizona who, uh, you know, they're surprised when I speak Farsi to them. I don't speak Farsi very well, but you know. You do, you do. Uh, uh, but they, then they, then they look at me and they, are you Iranian? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> but Just maybe, say, okay, okay, that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that. Yes, <laughs> you got it. You have the best expressions down. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I can't transliterate bah, 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 because it looks like bah, bah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's fun. Well, Roland's best friend, there is even more of a connection. That, um, when Roland left England, his best friend, childhood friend, they're like brothers, um, was, got the same kind of personality that I do, very kind of... Blah, in your face. Yeah. And um, and Roland's not. <laughs> Roland's very British. Yes, right. So when when Roland left the the UK, Richard, his friend, was um, dating a British a uh, uh, Persian girl, and Roland said, "Oh well, I'm I'm off to Iran." And Richard wrote back and said, "Well, I've just." gotten engaged to this lovely lady. And shortly, because we were so quick, Roland said, well, I've just gotten engaged. And they wanted each other to be their best man. And it, it, it didn't work out. They weren't able to, to come and travel. So then when we went back that first summer, there's that trepidation, like, is my best friend from life going to like the person that I've married. Because if it's- For if both they don't, of them. Exactly. If they don't, that's the kiss of death and they drift away. Well, Richard and I, it was like meeting our shadows. We just, you know. Yes. And, and Roland and Madash, Madash is her name. They were, Madash is very quiet, very reserved, very conservative, very, you know, and, We'd be out dancing, and you know, Richard and I would dance together, and our arms were all over the place, doing the bump or whatever. And you know, Madash and Roland are sort of like, like this. Well, we became well and truly. I mean, the kids know them as Uncle Richard and Auntie Madash. They are family, and. Um, 
when I get together with Navash, you know, we sit and we drink cup after cup after cup of tea, and we just go through everything. And oh, you know, she's got a very large extended family, and we we have to hear what Shaheen is doing, and Amir did the and on and and I know all of their children, and you know, so it's it's like I have a Persian family extended, you know. Isn't that interesting that Roland's best friend married a Persian? In in England. <laughs> and and we were within a month or so of each other. That you know. is a great story. So yeah. What an amazing life you have and continue to have. It's it's a good ride. <laughs> yeah. And I'm really I'm really honored that you agreed to interview with me. Oh, thank you. I, I'm delighted. I think it's, you know, it's, you, you talk about writing the way I kind of approach um, art or creating. It, it, I have so many images in my head, just as I'm sure you have so many stories or thoughts that could be something. And some of them live there in my head and some things never come out to, to evolve into anything. And other things I'm, I'm absolutely obsessed with. And I have to do them now, do it now and get it down. And, and, it, and the, that creative process, the, the most difficult thing is, okay, knowing when have I done enough? Is it done? Yeah. Have I... Um, so it's interesting to hear you say the same about writing. Do you do that when you paint? Do you paint? I, I paint. I work in many different mediums. Uh, you know, it, 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 lately I've been working in um, <laughs> detritus, <laughs> rust, <laughs> um, broken rust, glass, nails. And oh, I love that. Well, it's a sign of the times. Yeah, <laughs> it's I would love to have a photo or two of your rec your work that you're most proud of that I can put on, put on the video. Whatever you want to add. Same here. Which child do you love best? <laughs> I know. Just pick one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Show me the detritus one. <laughs> I'll find, I'll find something. Um, I'm sure. So it's been a wonderful interview with you. And uh, is Roland up for next week? Yes. Tell me it's on the, the 16th. I was going to do it. Yeah. That's like a week from today. Same time, same station. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to remind him about it. Cause you yeah, know. it'll be the same link too. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. I am so happy to have talked to you. Uh, it's been lovely. Yeah. You are out this way. There's always a place, and I will cook for you. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm there. Yeah. What are you near? We're in Phoenix. Okay. Oh, that's a beautiful place. We're right. Well, the the Grand Canyon is on on our bucket list. So, oh, you, have you know, as soon as COVID goes away, I'm traveling. Definitely, you're more than welcome here. We have room. Um, we live at the, on, on South Mountain, so we're literally overlooking the city, and we've got, it's a, don't come in the summer. It's too you, hot. It's, I mean, it's still hot now. It's 106 today. So, oh, yeah. wow. But you're back east, right? Yes, yeah. We have the humidity. It's... Yeah, but... <laughs> It, I, I would take the humidity. I would take it. You know? Yeah. We, we've had one inch of rain all year. Oh, that is brutal. And you go outside and you just, you feel the, literally, when you walk outside the house, you just, you feel your skin go. It's, it's yeah, it's dry. Uh -huh. Constantly. You have to moisturize and sunblock and drink water. And, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, my dear, I know you have lots to do. I'm sure you do too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Bye bye. bye.